Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please ensure to like, share, and subscribe. And also click the bell notification in the top right hand corner to be made aware anytime I upload tutorials or videos to YouTube. Alright, let's craft together. Hey guys, today we're going to be working on a combination of sublimation and SS10 rhinestones. And um, I did a poll for my YouTube channel and asked what are some things that you would like to see, some type of project, and rhinestones was the number, number, one of the number one requested things. So I decided we would do sublimation with rhinestones. So for this particular project, we're going to be using our sticky flop. This is what we're going to use to get our um, rhinestone templates cut out of and your um, sticky flock. It also comes with the mask so you can pick up or you're like your transfer sheet that you can pick up your rhinestones. I'll have this linked in the description um, for the Amazon supplier that I purchased this from. And I also have my kit with all my little rhinestones in it. So um, we're going to be using 100% polyester um, t-shirt since we're doing sublimation. And my favorite, we're going to be using a sub 11 by 17 um, sublimation paper, as well as the a sub ink. Okay, um, I'm using my Epson Workforce 7720 printer um, that I've changed over from inkjet to sublimation, and then we're going to be pressing it on my heat press that is a 16 by 24 that I bought off of eBay. All right, so I think I've covered everything that I'm going to be using in this project minus my Cricut, which is going to cut our template for us. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, here we are inside Microsoft PowerPoint. And you know that is normally what I use when I'm doing a large print project. And this project is super large. So when you come into Microsoft PowerPoint, we want to get this to just a blank slide. So what we're going to do is first we're going to put in our sizing. So since we're using 11 by 17 A sub paper, we're going to come to the menu and select design. And then we're going to come over to the right and select slide size, custom slide size. We're going to change this to a width of 11 and a height of 17. Okay, Doris. Width of 11 and a height of 17. And we're going to put this in the portrait position or orientation and hit OK. And then you're going to select ensure fit. So now we have the exact slide size for our ASA paper. And then we're going to right click. We're going to come down to layout, just lay our cursor there. And then you see all these office themes. We're going to select blank, the one that says blank. And that's going to free your slide of anything being on the top of it. Top of it as if you were doing a presentation of some sort, okay? So we only need this one slide uh, right now, but if you wanna get another slide that has the same settings as we just set, you would just right click and say duplicate slide and now you have two. Now this slide looks really small, so let me make sure that I did my typing correct and I did not. So I knew that was off just by the look. There we go. Now that's right. All right, <clears throat> so we got 11 by 17 for our slide size. We're gonna grab our image. So we'll go to insert pictures, this device. And I'm going to be using today, I'm going to be using this image right here. Um, and I got this image off of Etsy. And so I'll share that in the description. I think I'm going to go with the, I kind of want to go with the blue, but the orange, I think this is the orange. Let's do an insert. Now it's going to come in the size that it should be. 
if you, I will link the a supplier of this particular um, image. If you decide to um, purchase this template, you do not want to change the sizing. Okay, so when it comes in, whatever size it comes in as, you want to leave it that because we're going to be putting rhinestones on the crown, on the queen, on her sunglasses here, and then on this little strip of her shirt. Um, we're going to have rhinestones on that. So do not I cannot stress, do not change the sizing, okay? But what we do want to do, because this is sublimation, we want to make sure we cl uh, click on the image and we're going to come over to rotate and select flip horizontal because you're going to mirror your design, okay? So now we have our image ready and we are going to be um, like i said we're going to be putting printing this out on a sub paper using a sub ink and again i'm using 11 by 17 paper okay so you can see that all of this is going to fit right in there and again we're not changing the sizing if you change the sizing guys your rhinestones are not going to fit fit this image okay all right so to print this out i'm going to click on file and print and I'm just gonna print the current slide and I'm gonna change this to my Epson Workforce 7720 and then I'm just gonna make sure my quality is set to the highest and okay and I'm gonna make sure under more options that I deselect high speed and we're gonna change our document size to tabloid which is your 11 by 17. And we want the output to be the same as the document size. So those two will match. And at this point, we are ready to, I'm gonna put this on paper cassette one. And we're gonna hit okay. And then all I have to do now is click on print. So I'm gonna bring you up on my screen and then we'll continue our journey here. All right, guys, so now we have our um, image on our screen ready to print out. So I'm going to take out my tray to load my 11 by 17 paper. Now, the workforce, Epson Workforce 7720, guys, has been discontinued. Um, if you find this printer, it would be very, very expensive to purchase it. Um, so just to put that out there, I'm pretty sure Epson will come up with a different printer. <clears throat> so again, we're using our A sub paper, 11 by 17. And I hope most of you know that when I do a tutorial, I normally link the supplies that I use in the description. So we have our paper loaded. The A sub should be facing you, the words on the paper. We're gonna put our lid back on the top. And we're going to All right, so I'm going to get this printed out, and then we'll continue. Okay, guys, our image is printing out, and it's almost done. And uh, one of the things with sublimation, for those of you that are new to sublimation, is that when you're doing sublimation, when it first prints out, it's going to look really, really dull. And that's because sublimation doesn't come to life until you... Um, heat press it. Once you press it, then the colors are going to become vibrant. So don't panic when it first comes out and say it looks dull. I will tell you if your colors look off, then you need to go in and maybe do a print head cleaning or a nozzle check because you want to make sure that your colors are right. Okay. So here is my image now printed out. So it's going to look super dull. Another thing that I'll tell you is that a lot of times when you're doing sublimation, when you first print it out, it's going to have 
Um, sometimes you can get from other projects and the last project I did was DTF, the DTF film. And so sometimes you can get ink around your image in places that it shouldn't be. So I always cut around my image just to make sure that I don't get any of that excess ink that printed around the edges of the paper. Okay. So I'm going to take my little Cricut filters and you can kind of see it really faint um, right here, but there's like a little smudge right here of ink and it looks faint right now, but if I print this out, it's going to look dark and that's where you can look and say, what is that? It, it came from your printer. So like I said, you don't have to cut around your image when you're doing sublimation. I do just to make sure if I had any little traces of excess ink to pick up that it does not display in my project. Don't want that to happen because once it's on there, it's on there. And I did one of the cardinal sins, which is I'm touching the ink and I shouldn't because your ink is still wet when it first comes out. And that could be another way that you can get ink in places that it shouldn't be. So let me try to be careful not to touch my ink. Now, I thought I was picking the um, orange one, but this is actually looks red, but it's fine. I think it's going to be perfect. So now I have traced around or cut around my image. Again, you don't have to do this step, but if you find yourself getting ink in places that you don't understand where that ink came from, it's because your printer is printing ink from, you know, excess. Now, we're going to be pressing this on our shirt. We're going to press it at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. So I have my heat press heating up. Once it's ready, we'll go to the heat press and we'll go ahead and press our shirt. Um, when you're doing sublimation, you want to make sure that you lint roll your shirt. That's to make sure you pick up any dust, any hair particles that may be on there. If you do not lint roll, and you can get the lint rollers at Walmart or anything like that, but... If you don't lint roll, if there is any particles on that polyester shirt, it's going to come through in your sublimation and it's going to look kind of rough and you don't want that. OK, so you want to make sure you lint roll and then you want to do a pre press for about five seconds. And then at that point, we're coming down about three fingers from the um, neck. You're going to come down about three fingers and that's where you want to start your um, image. If you're doing like a, a super large shirt, like 3X, 4X, it's okay to come down about four fingers um, instead of three um, because you're working with the larger print, uh, print area. Okay, so I'm going to come down about three fingers and um, don't forget to mirror. So again, I'm using Microsoft PowerPoint. You can use whatever software you have that will print large images. Um, Cricut Design Space will not print larger than 6.75 by 9.25. So that's why I never do my large print projects in Cricut Design Space. That being said, when you do it this way, you do have to cut it yourself, even though I wouldn't have allow, allowed Cricut to cut this anyway because of all the fine details of the words. Okay, so we are ready to press. So I will meet you at the heat press. Again, we're going to press it at um, 400 degrees for 60 seconds. We're going to put some heat tape to secure our image onto our shirt so that we don't end up with any ghosting. And, uh, and then we'll come back and we'll walk through the rhinestone process. All right. All right, guys, here we are at the heat press. So the first step is going to be to lint roll your shirt to make sure you don't get any dust, hair particles, what have you in the final output of your sublimation. You can get a set of these at um, Walmart. I'm pretty sure maybe Dollar Tree, Dollar 25, they have them. After you lint roll, you're going to do a pre-press for about five seconds. And let me try to... Um, release the pressure on that a little bit because I had it so tight that I barely could let the press down. All right. So you guys maybe can see that a little bit, but there's dust particles 
um, on there that would be on your shirt when you press it. So we're going to do a pre-press. Just about five seconds just to get your shirt nice and flat, no wrinkles. We're going to take our image. We're going to lay that face down. I've already did the three, three, three fingers from the top. So I'm going to go there. And I'm going to put a couple of pieces of heat tape just to hold it in place. So that I don't have to worry about any ghosting. We're going to press this at 400 for 60 seconds. And I'm going to put a piece of butcher or parchment paper on top because this ink does it does bleed bleed through and we're gonna press it for 60 seconds at 400 degrees all right when we're about five seconds out I'll bring you back all right guys we're at seven seconds three two and one all right so it's always good to just make sure that everything took before you lift it up so i just always do kind of like a little like a, a little bit of a look-see if it doesn't look like it's pressed enough or as vibrant as you need it you can always just put your paper back down and press again and it looks like my heat press is a little bit lower than the um 400 so i'm gonna press it for a couple of seconds longer and then i'll come back all right I'll turn this off and we are good to go now um Sometimes you have bleed out. That's the ink on your butcher paper or plain copy paper. I don't really notice it with the parchment paper, but that doesn't mean that it's not there. So I don't take a chance with it because you don't want to end up with that ink in your next project. So we're going to go ahead and take this off. And it looks beautiful. Alright, so we have our t-shirt done as far as the sublimation piece of it. And now we're going to just leave this here and we're going to work on the rhinestones because the rhinestones are going to go on the crown, on the queen, on her shades or sunglasses, and then on her top. So I'm going to walk you through the process of the rhinestones and then we'll be done. Now we will lower the uh, heat press temperature we will lower it because we don't need that high setting for the rhinestones and we'll do that in a moment but i'm just going to leave this here we're going to go back and we're going to now walk through the part for the rhinestones all right guys now this is the rhinestone piece of it this is the ss10 um hot fix rhinestone template that i'm using this is an image that i purchased from etsy it comes in multiple colors so you see here we have the pink it also comes in the yellow. It also comes in the orange. It also comes in the purple. And then it also comes in the, I think this is actually red. It looks orange on here, but I think that's the red. And then that's kind of like another, like in the pink family. Okay, but anyway, when you're looking at rhinestone templates, what I do to find rhinestone templates on Etsy, uh, here I am in Etsy. Normally, I just type in SS10 because I want to make sure I have the right rhinestone size. So I'll just type in SS10 rhinestone template. And then I know that these templates that I'm looking at are um, comparable to the SS10. Okay, but since I've already purchased this, I'm just going to go to my purchases. And I'm going to access this particular file that way. Okay, so when you're looking at these, you want to take a look at a few things. 
um, on here before you purchase. So number one, when you look at this, um, I'm going to kind of make it larger. But when you look at this, you see where the rhinestones are. So you'll know that the rhinestones are actually going to go on the crown. They go on the word queen. They go on the sunglasses or the shades. And then on her top, that's where the rhinestones are going to go. Okay, so it's not, this is telling you that this is not just an image for rhinestones based on what you see here, okay? As you're looking at this, it tells you uh, that this is a digital file type, a PNG and a zip. So your PNG is going to be the image, the zip file is going to be your rhinestone template, okay? So that's very important. It's also letting you know that this image is 16.844 by 10.234, that's your length and your width. So you know right off the bat that that length is going to be super, super large, okay? So if you're trying to put this on like a really small t-shirt, it may be too big for that small t-shirt, okay? Um, I'm using an extra large t-shirt, so I knew size would not be an issue for me. Um, also, it tells you this is a digital design, sublimation image design with SS10 size rhinestone. So we've already completed the sublimation portion, and now we're getting ready to do the SS10. It's also going to tell you how many rhinestones it's going to, most of them will tell you how many round, rhinestones it's going to take. So you're going to need 553 size SS10 hot fix rhinestones, 553. Um, and then it tells you if it's comparable to Cricut and all those good things, okay? So a lot of good information to know, mainly is how many rhinestones is, is it going to take? Because if you only have 400, then you know you don't have enough rhinestones for this particular project. Or if you have 553, but you have two different colors, then you're going to have to, you know, maybe make your crown silver and make everything else a different color, okay? Um, but that's it. So um, I've already uploaded this into Cricut Design Space. And my sticky flock sheets are actually smaller than the template size. So I'm gonna show you what I did in that case. All right, so for Cricut Design Space, what I did is I actually sliced the template All the way over there. All right, hold on one second. My cricket is being funny. My, I think my battery is dying in my mouse, so it's acting like it's moving. Give me one second. Okay, there we go. All right, so what I did is when the design comes in, I'm just going to show you what the design is going to come like or look like when it comes in. So I'm going to go to Upload. And here's the template right here. I'm going to add that to my canvas. And when it comes in, it's going to come in and it's going to have the black um, behind it. I like to just put mine on um, white so that I can actually see it better without that black background you can do as you choose but what i did because my sticky flock is not 9.168 by 9.11 it's actually like an 11 by 7 so it's not quite long enough what i did is i sliced so if you guys are familiar with the slice process i just went over and took a shape and i just went with this rectangle and then i brought that down to where I wasn't going to interfere with the 
rhinestones above it. And then I just took this image And I got it right on that edge like that. And I highlighted both of them. And then I sliced. Okay. And what that does, it, it, it allows me to be able to use my sticky flock so that I can get both on one, you know, my slice. Okay, anyway, I sliced it. You can see it here on my screen. You see the crown by itself. Um, all right. Come on. Acting up now. All right, hold on one second. All right, guys, here we are. I have separated my um, sizing here. So um, I'll be able to use one sheet. Um, I'm going to have to do one side and then cut the sticky flop. You'll see here in just a moment. Okay, so the other thing is once your template comes in into Cricut Design Space, do not resize it. It is the size that it needs to be in order to fit your t-shirt's image, okay? So do not change the sizing here. If you change these, this sizing here, then this is going to make this smaller or larger than your SS10s and it won't fit. So do not change the sizing once it comes into Cricut Design Space. At this point, we're ready to click on make it and you don't have to worry about doing any mirroring or anything like that and so um right now you can see that it's too large so what i'm going to do i'm going to go back because i don't want it i want it to have to print twice so i'm going to hide one or cut twice i'm going to hide this one and just do the crown first and that way I only have to, I can, I can still get away with using just one sheet of my sticky flock. Okay. All right. So you want to make sure that the sticky flock that's on your mat is a little bit over your four inches up to about nine and a half to take care of this template. So we're going to click on continue. And once that comes up, I'm going to um, go to browse. All right, guys. So I've already cut out the crown portion. And so now we're going to do the portion of her top, the queen, and the shades. We're going to click on make it. And we need this to be, the sizing is important. So you need about one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four five, a little bit over five um, in width for your um, template. And then it's going to cut at a little bit about eight and a half. If you look, if you click on it, it's really, let's see what it says here, um, 5.242 by 9.168. So that's about how much sticky flock or magic flock, whichever one you're using that you would need to have on your mat. Okay, so we're going to click on make it. And the settings that I'm using, I created my own setting to make sure that this cuts out um, properly for me. So I'm going to show you what I use. You don't have to do anything from here. You're just going to click on continue. And I'm going to click on browse all materials. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom here, bottom left, where it says material settings. And I'm going to click on flock. 
or I'm gonna show you my flock setting that I created. All right, so I'm going to scroll down to the flock. Okay, this one right here. So I have mine. I created this setting. Um, I call it the magic flock test because the magic flock at 300 um, for the pressure was not enough. So I created me one and I put it at 350 to cut twice using the fine point blade. So magic flock test is what I use. Just the magic flock setting that Cricut has, like I said, was not enough pressure. So I'm gonna go to browse all material. I'm gonna type in my flock. And I'm using the Magic Flock Test one. And this one, I want to take off of favorites and make it this one. All right. So we're going to click on Done. All right. And I'm going to come up on my screen and we're going to walk through the rest of the process here. guys we have our sticky flock here so you're going to take and you're going to peel off that white backing before you put it onto your mat you want to make sure that your mat is really sticky um, because you don't want this to slide in any way once it starts to cut and you want to make sure you have it lined up nice and properly so that you get all of the cuts as you should the only thing about having this size is that, you know, if you had the full 12 by 12, then we could have did just the full cut on one sheet, but this is 11 by seven. So um, 11 and a half by seven, I think, or 11 and a half by eight, something like that. But it's not, was it wouldn't have been large enough to cut all of it on one sheet. So that's why I had to do the slicing. So now that I've shown you the settings that I use in Cricut, we're gonna go ahead and load this baby up around there and we're going to go ahead and put it into our machine and we're going to go ahead and start to cut out our template so that we can get the rest of the set that goes to our crown and then we're going to lay our rhinestones and then we're going to press it on our t-shirt all right I will tell you that these little blue pieces of uh, sticky flock, they get everywhere. <laughs> they get everywhere, so have a trash can near you, okay? All right, we're going to let this cut out, and then we'll come back, and we'll finish up. All right, guys, our rhinestone set is finished cutting here. It's just doing that outline. And we're going to get ready to start layering our rhinestones all right so it's done what i highly recommend before you take this off you want to make sure that everything cut right so just kind of lift up on it just to make sure that your rhinestones cut and you can see all these little dots that's an indication that everything cut like it should so we can go ahead and we can um unload our mat okay so we're gonna take that off now the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna save this border because i can use this for another project <clears throat> i'm just gonna cut off this little excess right here that i will not need but this, I'm going to put back on that white paper. 
and I'll save it for another project. But no material gets wasted, guys. No material gets wasted. put that on there and I'll put that back in my pack once I'm done all right so now we can go ahead and we can lift up this off of our mat and see what all we have here okay so we have some that we're gonna have to still kind of push out um, on our own and that's fine normally you can take your little weeding tool or you can lay your, let me pull this down so I'm so you can see. You can lay this down and you can use your um, tools, your Cricut tools to kind of help you to try to get those extra rhinestones out of there. Or not rhinestones, but those extra circles out of there that did not come up on their own. And you can see you'll place it down on your mat a couple of times just to see if you can get them to come up just like that and let's take a look They're looking a little bit better because the less work we have to do the less work we have to do pushing out these little extra holes the better so I don't have a lot of room to work with right now these little blue dots can be a head ache all right let's take a look all right so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take and use my little um, Cricut tool here to get some of these little blue dots up so that I can have some space to work with on my mat and you don't want to press too hard because you don't want to you know mess up your mat where it's not sticky any longer but just enough so that you can lift up you know some of those blue dots so you can have some room here because if they're sitting underneath the area where you're going to lay this down it defeats the purpose because it's not going to you know you're not going to be able to get all the get up get those little extra dots that didn't come off off of there and I don't like these things on my finger they like get on my nerves these little blue dots being stuck to my hand they're so irritating all right so we're gonna take this and we're gonna lay it down and we're gonna see if we can get these last few little dots to stay down <clears throat> just got a couple of them and we may have to use our other weeding tool but we're just trying to get any extra dots without us having to do the work so you can see we still got a few more that came out of there so there's like a couple of them right here let me see if I can get them to come on up there we go Alrighty, and then right here at Queen. Alright, so Queen looks good. You guys can see that. And then the top, and then the shades. So, I think I have enough of the kind of silver-like rhinestones. I'm going to play this by ear. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut everything so that it's separate, okay? So I'm going to cut out the part for the top. And then I'm going to cut out the part for the shades. And then there's your queen. And then I already have my my crown already cut out okay so now we're down to the easy part guys and the easy part is just making sure that we layer or we get um you know everything in a position where we can um put it on to our 
shirt that's already waiting on us that we've sublimated. So I'm going to cut this down a little bit so I can have room. I don't, I'm not going to have enough room to, I don't think, get my shirt on there. <clears throat> Let me see if I cut the shirt down a little bit. I'm trying to make it where I don't have to use another piece of cardstock. So I'm trying to get everything on this one little piece of cardstock. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, we might be a little successful here. It looks like I got everything on to this one piece of cardstock. So when we get ready, after we layer our rhinestones, we'll go in and we'll lay down the mask on top of it. And that's what's going to lift up our rhinestones so that we can put them on the shirt. And we can cut the, the plastic here that we're going to be using. We can cut it to size. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to layer one with you guys because I don't want to waste a lot of time putting all the rhinestones in. And plus, I only have so much time on my camera uh, here. So, I'm going to start out the using these uh, SS10 crystal rhinestones. And I'm hoping I have enough. If I don't, then I'm going to make the shades, I mean the top, a different, a different color. But what you do is you just pour the rhinestones on your design like so and these babies will go all over the place and then you're going to brush them into place okay so you just kind of brush them around until you get them where they're supposed to be. And I love crystal rhinestones, so I need to order more. To me, the crystal ones turn out so, so pretty. Chime in in the comments and let me know if you've used the SS10s, what color you've used that was really pretty. So I'll have some other ideas to check out. But... <clears throat> You're just going to kind of play around with moving them around, rotating them around until you get them into position. And always be careful because some of them might double up, guys. So you don't want them to double up on you. So we just about got queen done. You can see that we have queen just about taken care of. <clears throat> and that's all you're doing is just brushing the rhinestones. You can see queen here. You're just brushing those rhinestones into place. Okay, so I'm going to finish these up. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to do the tape part together. So you can see that. And then we'll be ready to heat press. All right, so queen is done. I think I got one right there that needs to go in. And you want to make sure they're all on the right side, guys. All right, so queen is done. As you can see, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do the crown, the shades, and then the top, and then I'll come back. All right, guys, we have all of our rhinestones in place and you're basically just taking this little rhinestone brush um, and you're just basically brushing the rhinestones into place. You always want to double check your work and make sure that you don't have any e extra rhinestones. You want to make sure all the rhinestones are going in the right place. And like right here, it looks like I've moved one. So... Let's put that back in there, but always double check your work. It's better to find your errors here than to find your errors in your finished work, okay? 
So just take a good look to make sure that all the rhinestones are in place and then you are good to go from there. And I missed a whole dot <laughs> right there. So I'm just gonna grab, and I had enough rhinestones to make it, to use the same rhinestones for the whole project. So that was fantastic. So I'm just gonna drop that rhinestone in there. And now we are good to go. Now with your magic flock and your sticky flock, normally it's going to come with the transfer tape. This is not the same transfer tape that we use with vinyl. So do not try the vinyl transfer tape. So you are going to cut down to size your um, transfer tape. Now I'm probably gonna lay the whole thing on there and then cut from there instead of trying to do each individual piece. I think that'll be easier since we have four pieces. So inside my set here, you're gonna have your transfer tape. One side is going to be the shiny side. One side is the dull side. The shiny side is the side that you're going to need to put it down onto your um, onto your rhinestones. So I'm going to have to use two of these because don't forget I have a crown that I have to... Uh, well, I got the crown. I forgot I put the crown on here. So we're going to see if we can get this one sheet and it's best to start from the center guys and then work your way outward okay just like that and sometimes you may notice some of your rhinestones may shift that's okay just take your fingers or your weeding tools and push them back into place but the main thing is to get them all on here and make sure that they're all in place then i'm going to take some scissors and i'm going to cut each one of these individually out because i'm going to be placing them onto my shirt in sections individually and then we're going to heat press this at 325 for 15 seconds so you always after you do the sublimation you want to decrease the um heat for your um, rhinestones because it doesn't take that much heat or that much uh, time to put these on the shirt, okay? And then I'm still going to put the parchment paper on the top because that's still sublimation ink that I don't want to get on the top of my heat press. All right, so I'm going to take these now that I have them all in place and I'm just making sure that they're all stuck down. And not moved. And then I'm just going to cut them. Again, start from the center and then lay your plastic film outward. This is not the same transfer tape, guys, that you would use for vinyl. So please do not try to use that. Um, and I've never tried. I was just told that that is not the same. And I didn't want to waste. So you always want to make sure that you get the transfer tape that comes with the sticky flock or the magic flock okay so we're just cutting these all down to size now because they're going to be laid on the shirt you know in separate areas it's kind of like paper dolls kind of reminds me of paper dolls all right, so we're going to now go to the press and we're going to lay these down and press them on 325 for 15 seconds. All right, see you at the press. All right, guys, I'm going to start taking these and layering them in the position in which they're supposed to go. And... Going the wrong way. Just gonna lift up and you want to make sure all your rhinestones come with you then we're gonna take and we're gonna put this on the shirt just 
just like that. So we got our rhinestones layered on our shirt. We're then going to lift off on our shades. And we're going to do the same thing. Okay. We're going to put our shades in place. Just like that. And we're going to do our queen. Trying to make sure I got enough time on here. So we're going to lift off the queen. Place your queen down. Okay. Go ahead and turn my press on and get it heated up here. And then we're going to do our crown. our rhinestones off the crown and we're going to layer our crown now Okay. And the side over here look like it's a little bit too long, but that's okay. So we're going to give my heat press time to heat up and then we're going to press this at 325 for 15 seconds. Uh, I'm going to put butcher paper on the top. Excuse me a parchment paper we're going to put that on the top and then we're going to press it to 325 for 15 seconds so we're going to let it heat up and then we'll press all right guys our press is ready so we are going to just put this parchment paper on top we're going to go 15 seconds 325 again after you do the sublimation Take the pressure down or the heat down from 400 to 325 and from 60 seconds to 15 seconds. Okay, that's our top. We're going to save these little sheets because we can use them again. And as guys, we have our t-shirt done, and this is the outcome. So this is sublimation with the SS10 rhinestone. Sublimation with the SS10 rhinestones. 
and I think it turned out beautiful if I say so myself and I'm gonna wear this today <laughs> so I just made me a shirt to wear today but you guys can see that sublimation now the I noticed that there's a little discoloration in the skin tones that's actually in the image itself so that's how the image is actually made for those that may inquire that is how the image is made okay so um for this particular project guys um again ss10 rhinestones be very very um careful when you're looking at the rhinestone templates i tell you the best way if you're looking at etsy is to go ahead and put in ss10 um so that you will have more SS10s um, available to you than like SS20s and so on and so forth, smaller or bigger sizes. Um, so go ahead and just put in SS10 rhinestone template when you're searching in Etsy. I will link the person, uh, the supplier for this particular image in the description. It'll be at the top of the description in the tutorial. And, um, this is on 100% polyester, guys. You could get by with it on 65% uh, polyester um, and then cotton, okay? You... I don't think I cut my, I don't think I cut my camera off on my cell phone. <laughs> so it picked up me talking on there. But you won't be able to, um, you can get away with a cotton poly blend. That's what I'm saying. Polyester being the higher count um, for sublimation on this. Um, and then, like I said, sublimation part, you're going to mirror your image. I used ASAP paper, ASAP ink, um, heat press it 60 seconds at 400 degrees, and then lower the temperature to 325 for 15 seconds for the rhinestone piece. The rhinestone piece does not take that much um, heat and that long a time for pressing, but it turned out perfectly. Make sure you're using your little brush, and you're just brushing the rhinestones into place, okay? Um, always follow up to look and make sure you don't have any doubled up to make sure they're all going in the right direction because it's very easy to miss them. So check, double check your work. That's basically what I'm saying. Double check your work. And um, what else? The templates that we did, we'll be able to use those again. So we won't need to cut this we won't need to cut this out again. All we would need to do if we wanted to do this in a different color is go ahead and sublimate our t-shirt and then take those same templates that we put on the cardstock and just put our rhinestones in, okay? Just put your rhinestones in and look how nice that is. Just put your rhinestones in. So you don't have to do the cut part again. So Christmas is right around the corner, guys. If you haven't had a chance to do any shopping or if you can't afford to go and buy anything people love personalized gifts here you go and it's multiple colors that this comes in which is amazing i love this template and it wasn't very expensive i think it was like three dollars and something it might have been two i don't remember but it was not not very expensive okay but i will link it in, in the description um <clears throat> i'll continue to ask you guys what would you like to see on my youtube channel to make sure that you're benefiting from um, it and that I'm just not crafting something that no one has interest in. So that is why I ask you those uh, quick questions in the polls on what you would like to see me do a tutorial on. So here is one on rhinestones, which was the number one request that I got was doing something on with SS10 rhinestones, okay? So I think it turned out really pretty. I'm excited. I can't wait to put it on. All right. So guys, if you're currently in my Facebook group, Ken Doris's Cricut and Creative Crafters, I want to thank you guys so much for following me um, via Facebook. If you would like to join my group, it will be linked in the description for you to just click on and then make your request. You do have to agree to the rules in the group um, because we want to make sure we're not getting scammed scam <laughs> spam and scammers okay i i don't know what i was thinking about what is, we, we don't need scammers and we don't need any spam in our group 
Um, and then if you are currently subscribed to my YouTube channel, guys, thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel. We hit over 10,000 now uh, for my channel. I say we, but now I'm over 10,000. I say we because I consider you all a part of my journey. I'm going to see if I can get to 20 of 2023. <laughs> um, and I will be doing a giveaway on my YouTube channel I'm trying to get through all this Christmas stuff but I am going to be doing a giveaway because I did hit the 10,000 mark in 2022 so I will be doing a giveaway you will have to be subscribed to my YouTube channel I'm not saying you have to be subscribed as of a certain time but you do have to currently be subscribed at the time the giveaway is going on okay um and if you're not currently subscribed to my YouTube channel, why not? I mean, come on, man. <laughs> All right. So if you like my method of teaching, guys, then please like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Okay? And you guys know my motto. Each one reach one so that each one can teach one, guys. And I hope you all are having an amazing time enjoying your family for the holidays. I'm going home to Atlanta to see mine. And I can't wait to see my granddaughters, I mean, all of my family. <coughs> but them granddaughters, that Makaya, that little girl crazy. All right, all right, guys, have a great day. Bye.